we've reached the end of the Magi Kingdom of Magic anime, but we gotta say it one more time, people. We gotta say it one last time on this final Kingdom of Magic review. It was that Magi greatness. I can see why they kind of let the animation slip the past couple episodes with Magi because for the finale, they went all out. There were no animation, no art, no nothing when it comes to the look of the series problems. There was just no problems whatsoever with everything. They made it look 10 times better than any of the previous episodes and it just looked absolutely gorgeous for every frame. And just overall, the look of this episode was phenomenal and beautiful. They went all in with the animation for this final episode. Shortly into the episode just kicks off with a death just like that. Shehrazade dies giving everyone the last bit of Magoi that the original Shehrazade had to give them you know the strength to put down the medium once and for all and it's kind of sad when you look at it because she gave her final bit of Magoi in hopes that they can put down the medium and it didn't work. It really just felt like a somber moment, and you could even see with the Reim Empire people, I believe it was Mu, if I'm correct, he was just there like, like, oh my god, she just gave up her life, and everyone went extreme magic, 13 people with metal vessels, and it was to no avail, and that's really just something different, whereas like, she gave up her life, and it was pretty much, you could almost say in a sense, in a certain sense, for nothing. And that, that just right there felt like, oh my gosh, like, such a powerful and impactful moment, and it's only a handful of minutes into the episode. And you always gotta get that Gyoko in commentary. While everything is going down, she has to make sure to throw in her two cents because you got extreme magic from 13 of these people, okay? You have Sinbad, the great Sinbad, you have Cohen, Koha, all of these amazingly strong people all went extreme magic, which they made it look absolutely marvelous in the anime. I can't stress enough how beautiful the animation in this episode was compared to everything else like that we've seen thus far. And with the 13 of them, Gil Cohen's like, 13 of y'all? 13? Really? That's it? It took 72 people to take down the medium in Alma Tehran, and that's just makes you even question further, like, what went down in Alma Tehran. So, even though this was the finale, it really just makes you think, like, there has to be a fucking season three. If not, you have to follow the manga, because there's just so much more stuff to come, because it's, like, it's foreshadowing stuff that is, like, yeah, this totally happened, and you probably want to see this. One of the shames, I will say, with this season wrapping up of Magi is that Sphinthus, while you get to see that he has to deal with Cetus' death at the end of this, or not really at the end of it, but when it actually happened when he's there with the bones, and he's like, you said you would stay with Marga and whatnot. It really felt like we should have got a little bit more of I would have liked a little bit more screen time with Spentus, because pretty much like he was built up in the beginning, he's friends with Aladdin, he's friends with Cetus, and for the most part, he didn't really get used throughout this war because he wanted to stay behind. He really didn't want to get involved, he didn't want to get confident. So while I respect his decision, ultimately I would like to see a little bit more of the character, and it's unfortunate that he got shafted, but at the very least we get to see him deal with what he believes is Titus' death there, and it was just a powerful moment as well, like a lot of powerful moments in this episode for the finale, they made sure to go strong and go heavy, and the moment you get Judal and Hakuryu there, you're just probably thinking to yourself, what the fuck are they doing there, what are they gonna do, and the line that Judal says when you first see him, the power, because Aladdin's using Solomon's wisdom, and he's like, the power that changed my way of life. Now, Judal, from what we know of this character, his way of life is he loves just carnage, fighting, battles. He has no care in the world, pretty much. He just wants to be fighting and think nothing of it. That's all he really cares about is fighting and carnage. So if that changed his way of life, the only thing I could think of is either he made a radical departure, which probably not because he's surrounded by Black Rook, and Hakuryu gave into that as well, which we'll get into. But the only thing I could think of is that maybe he truly has a king's candidate now with Hakuryu, and that's why he says that, like, yeah, this changed my way of life because now he feels as he has a purpose and he's going to make this person the king and they're going to rule over all. That's the thing I could think of that why he said that. By the way, there's no spoilers. I'm not giving you any spoilers. This is my theory of it. 
And that's where I'm pretty much going with that. I feel as though that's what he meant by that power changed my way of life. Why Solomon's wisdom changed his way of life? What did it put into his head the last time they had that encounter? That's up for grabs, what it really was that targeted, you know, that triggered this change in Judal. But ultimately, the power definitely made him look differently at life, whether it be that he wants power, whether he wants Hakuryu to be the true king, or he doesn't really care about Carnage as much anymore. I don't know, but it definitely was a very interesting line, to say the least. And again, more foreshadowing. Now, Aladdin going into the medium, pretty much using Solomon's wisdom, and he took Yamurai in there, and that was a powerful moment again. And again, I said that this episode had a lot of powerful moments, but that was... If not the most powerful, then definitely top two most powerful moments because you see Mogamet and he realizes the error of his way and what he's done. And I like how he stood behind his conviction to a certain extent. He did change in the fact that he's not with this complete racist look on life and look on humanity and whatnot. But he changed in the sense that he's like, you know what? I dragged all these people down with me, all these people that have fallen into depravity and they pretty much can no longer go to the white route. They're stuck in the black route. So I die with them. And that was powerful as hell. And the final speech that he gave to them was just super powerful. Just talking about it, I have goosebumps on my arm. When he said, no man should ever have complete power, complete control. Because even the greatest man, a hundred times the strength of normal man, can make mistakes. And that automatically pointed to Cohen and Sinbad. The two people that are strongly vying to basically be king of the world. And he realized that there should be no one king. There should not be, and that just really stuck out to me, one of the most powerful things that he said. And the bond between him and Yamurai, finding out that he pretty much kidnapped her to save her life, and just the bond, and the, the tears and everything, it was just such one of those dumb feels type of moment. And I was just thinking to myself, like, this is so sad. I can't even front. I shed a couple of tears with this episode. The stuff with Mogama was just powerful, and it kind of goes into the whole theme of not only the Magnus Dot arc, but the series in general, just kind of anti-racism in a way like you, you got to understand people and it kind of reminds me a little bit of, in a way i guess of like the theme of naruto just trying to understand people and if everybody understood each other and got along we wouldn't have to have catastrophes like war and whatnot and that's what i feel mogamet and magnus thought really pushed the most this arc and this particular character amazing character really deep character i love that it was just so deep with the racism and he finally realized the error of his ways and it, it was just unfortunately too late because he dragged so many people down that he feels responsible for it very powerful and touching stuff that tease that they did at the end, I was like, oh, I don't even care if they do filler. Let me see Sinbad versus Cohen when you have both of them there ready for war. And it has to take Yunnan and Morgiana to say, hey, boneheads, we don't want you guys fighting. We try to put up extra precautions so you guys don't run into each other and start fighting. And it really just takes the resolve of both of them and having a rational mind that Sinbad has and Cohen has as well. And they're kind of like, well, you know, I don't think that this guy is as bad as the situation perceives, and if he wanted to conquer, it would be a different story, but there's more to these people than meets the eye, so they both kind of back down, and that, that moment just did the tension and the foreshadowing that this might someday go down indeed because they're both vying for the crown of king of not only Sindria, not only the co-empire, but of the entire world really just shatters right there. It's just like, oh my god, you know that's gonna happen one day. The comedy, like, it may sort of give you a little bit of a laugh, where he's like, you know, I'm gonna make sure I take full extent of, uh, getting Magnus thought up to, like, even when the, I read that in the manga, and then seeing it in the anime again, it's just like, you devious motherfucker. Even in the moment where I'm still saying, like, yeah, he's kind of a good guy, you see the shady ways, and everybody looking at him like, this motherfucker, even at the very end, he's like, no, nah, I just take a piece, you know, I take that Magnus thought, like, you motherfucker, Sinbad, but, I can't do anything but love this guy. Like, so amazing. And the comedic moment where he's like, all right, you, you taking Magnus Thought? I'm taking this Magi with me. And <laughs> I just fucking, like, died. It's like, you, you got me from one moment with Mogam, and I'm crying here with him and y Yamuraya. And then I'm fucking laughing my ass off there after the tension moment between the two of them of going down. It was like, this was the epitome of a perfect finale for a season. A, the epitome of it. Beautiful animation. Every mood you can possibly go through without feeling like a weird transition in between to them because it just fits so perfectly. It was like, this is the epitome of a perfection of an ending. Now, something that I could see being controversial in a way is Titus returning via the Rook. Apparently, he went to the palace with Ugo and it was originally going to be that Sheherazade was going to revive. She actually had a clone of her body and it makes sense why his hair is like that. Uh, because, you know, she was like a little girl, whatnot, and she, she had the appearance of a little girl. She was going to be revived, and it seems as though that Magi, they don't really necessarily die. It seems as though they get revived via the route. They go to the palace, and then they come back, and that's pretty much what happened, but she said, you know what? No, he wanted to live, so I'm gonna, and that was a very selfless move of her. I really respected that. It's like, 
I could come back to life, and I could probably live another couple hundred years. I'm going to let him have a shot. This is what he wanted all along. That's the motherly bond being wrapped up between Shehrazade and Kedis. It was like, that was her final role as his mother, and I loved and appreciated that moment. It was like, even that wrapped up perfectly. But I can see people kind of being upset, like, oh, you know, he was dead, we should just leave him dead. But it made perfect sense, and it kind of revealed the very big thing that Magi can continue to return via the Rook. So, unless they get to the Black Rook, which, like, Judal, if he dies, he can't return because it was clearly explained that pretty much the Black Rook can never go to the White Rook. Once you go to the Black Rook, you can never return. And it was very important, if you look at it, that Aladdin has a new goal. His new goal now is pretty much what Mogama gave to him, that you, I want you, please, to find a way to someday bring the Black Rook over to the White Rook. And I could totally see the series ending like that. That could possibly be foreshadowing of how it's going to end. Aladdin finally breaks all of this and makes the Black Rook over to the White Rook and completely deteriorates any of the Black Rook that's left in the world. Because in essence, it seems as though the Black Rook is the main cause of everything. It could be one speck of Black Rook that started it all and infected a White Rook and it continued onward. One bad apple spoils the bunch. And the final commentary from Gyoko in which godlike voice actress, I just gotta say her performance, the laughing, the maniacal sinister vibe, it's foreshadowing for yet again like this Gyokuen's dialogue and monologues within this episode all just points to foreshadowing for later events that really force like there needs to be a season three when she's basically like okay with her dying she had Azade there's a way now for father to come back even quicker and easier so it's like that was setting up for more stuff for later events it's like yeah I'm sure they want you to read the manga ideally but it's also pointing that there needs to be a season three at some point and I'm not gonna front I will be 100% honest with you the final dialogue that you get from Hakuryu when he's like, I'm basically abandoning you guys, I'm sorry, I've changed my ways. He pulled the Sasuke at the end. Regardless of how you want to say it, he pulled the Sasuke and in all honesty, the end of the season kind of felt like, in a way, in a, in a weird way, the ending of like Naruto Part 1, where pretty much Sasuke goes to the dark side. Judal, I guess, would be a less weird version of Orochimaru, even though this dude loves Carnage, Orochimaru loves the little ones, we won't go into that, it just really reminded me of that, he pulled a Sasuke at the end, he basically said, you know, fuck you guys, I couldn't get more Giano's badge, I'm going to the dark side, and it's just like, it makes you really question and wonder, what are their motives, what are their goals, what did Judal, he, when he said, he changed my way of life. What did he mean by that? When Hakuryu said, I'm sorry, but I have to go this way, I'd imagine it's still uh, on the course of his hatred towards the co-empire and his mother, so at some given point he will return, whether it's that he's going to go with Judal and build his own kingdom, the Hakuryu kingdom of some sort, but you could totally tell that that's where it's leading towards. And I'm really glad it didn't end exactly with that moment. The final shot was indeed of Aladdin, Alibaba, and Morgiana, because while it would have been very interesting to end on a dark note, I think Magi, what it represents ultimately is just happiness. I I think that's one of the best things that Magi brings out and you get that little smile in that final frame of them while you have everything going on the epicness the sad the tragedy everything that's in there the ultimate core of it is these three main characters and just seeing them happy at the end I felt was very perfect way and a fitting way nonetheless to end Kingdom of Magic hopefully someday we get a season three but I really want to stress and urge anybody that wants to continue because as of right now if you pick up the manga right now because a lot of people are going to ask me where should I start for Neverworld? Where do I go now? I want to read the manga. There are only 20 chapters. 21 chapters, actually, when the next chapter gets translated. 21 chapters from the anime to the manga. If you don't want to read from the beginning, I don't blame you. Some people, they already saw it. They experienced it. They want to keep going. You pick up from chapter 199. That's where it picks up exactly from where the anime left off. 199. Right now, we're on 220, basically. 220 comes out, um, hopefully, tomorrow, some sort. So... 20 chapters more or less and you're caught up and I highly stress it because from the point where the anime is now to where the manga is so much shit has already happened and we're getting so much great stuff so much comedy so much amazing past depth everything the same stuff that manga delivered you're gonna get so if you want to pick up the manga there you go my final thoughts on Kingdom of Magic regarding this episode and just as a whole, it has been phenomenal. This episode, 10 out of 10, perfect. It hit every point. It just really makes me wonder and wish that they do a season 3. There has to be a season 3 when there's enough material available. Obviously, they can't do it now. There's only 20 chapters. If we ever do get a season 3, I'm guessing it'll be around a year and a half to two years from now. Being honest with you guys, it'll probably take that long to gather up enough material if they do decide to do a season 3. I don't see why they wouldn't. Magi is like the what, fourth most popular manga right now in Japan as of 2013, so yeah, there's that. Um, and overall, it's just been a beautiful ride, and I will never stop saying, even in my manga reviews, that Magi greatness, because I love Magi, but I think watching Kingdom of Magic and getting all the material in such a very 
professional and beautiful presentation made me love Magi. And th that's truly from the bottom of my heart, honestly, when I'm telling you guys, this anime Kingdom of Magic made me love the series 10 times more than even what the manga did. And it's just an amazing thing. And that's where that Magi greatness comes from. The Kingdom of Magic really pushed forward and made this material stand out. And this final episode was no exception. It was just probably, if not the best, one of the best episodes of the entire series of Magi the Kingdom of Magic and Labyrinth of Magic for that matter. But let me know what you guys think. Favorite moment of this final episode. Do you want a season three? Are you going to check out the manga afterward again chapter 199 people that's where you pick up and your overall thoughts one time please say it with me people last comment hashtag that magi greatness i'm for never world and as always people have an awesome day and thumbs up for magi the kingdom of magic